Welcome back. This is lesson 8 of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 6 and in this lesson we will talk about tuning parameters for XGBoost model. So in the previous lesson we talked about XGBoost and we trained our first uh, model and we used the default parameters. So this was the, the parameters we used here. We used the default parameters and we saw how well or not well it performs and we saw that um, we can get almost 82% of AUC, uh, around uh, 25 trees, and then the performance declines. So this is what we did in the previous lesson. And in this lesson, we will tune these three parameters. So we'll tune parameter eta, max depth, and mean child weight. We will start with eta. Eta is also called learning rate. Remember I told you how exactly this model is trained. So let me take this and copy when we train our second model and when we combine the predictions from the first model with the second model it says how much weight this second model has when it's correcting the results of the first model so if the weight is uh, 1.0 then all the predictions are used to correct the predictions of the first model if uh, we use only 0.3 then uh, instead of adding these predictions 100%, instead of correcting all 100%, we use only 30%. So we're moving in uh, smaller steps. This is uh, the size of step. If it sounds confusing, don't worry. We'll now try different values of eta and see how different values of eta affect the performance of our model. So this is the model we trained previously. So these are the default parameters. Let's train it one more time. What I want to do now is create this um, dictionary that I'll call scores that is empty now. And I want to add the scores for each value of eta. For example, for eta equals to this parameter. So I want to make a key that looks like this, eta equals, and then xgboost parameter eta. Then it uh, is evaluated to this string. So I want to use as a key in this scores dictionary. Let me just call it key. And then the value will be the output of uh, XGBoost that we captured here. So let me use the function, this parse XGBoost output. And now this dictionary for this eta, it contains the data frame. So I can print it like that. This is the output of XGBoost that we captured. And now let's change this to you know, 1.0. This is the maximum value we can have. Let's run it one more time. I will move scores up. I'll put scores here, not to accidentally override it. And now you can also see what the key is. So now the key is actually 1.0. So now the scores dictionary should have two values, two keys. This is the second key, the second value which we will plot as well. But now I want to evaluate uh, 0 0.9. To see 0 point, 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.1. And let's also take a look at 0 0.05. So now it will finish, yes, 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. So uh, let's see what kind of keys we have. So we have at uh, 0 0.3, 1.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01. So we have all these data frames, all these scores, all these evaluation results. Now let's plot them. So for key, then data frame scores in scores items. We will plot it. Um, so data frame scores is the first value. Let me just Data frame score. So number iteration and AUC on validation. And then for label, we will use the key. And let's plot also the legend. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of things are going on here. I think we plotted too much. Um, let's do this for a couple of etas. So first we'll do it uh, equals 0 0.1. Then we'll do it equals 0 0.3 and it equals 0 0.1. Uh, in uh, address, so data frame score equals scores eta and label eta. 
this is a bit easier to understand. So this one is uh, 0.1, this one is 0.3, and this one is 0.1. So what we see here is that 1.0 is worst quite quickly. So around the uh, first five iterations, it get K performance, but then it drops and it stays at quite a bad level. And then um, the next one is uh, 0 0.3. We saw it already, so it has quite an okay AUC at uh, iteration number 25, right? and then it goes down like that. So when it comes to 0 0.1, it grows slower, it reaches the peak around 75, and then it starts to decline. This is what learning rate is about. We can see how fast the model learns, but also how large the steps are that the model takes with each new iteration. And if the steps are too large, then the model learns something quite fast, but then at some point starts to degrade because the steps are too large. So it starts overfitting, but this model needs more iterations till it becomes better. But uh, even though it needs more iterations, it learns slower, but it learns better. And then when uh, it starts degrading, it also doesn't overfit as fast as this one. So then let's take a look at uh, this 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0 0.01. For this 0 0.01, it's very slow. It learns slowly, slowly, slowly. And yeah, we don't know how much time it needs. Maybe it will be eventually better than this one, but it just needs too many iterations. So it takes forever to learn. And so this is too slow. So the steps it makes are tiny. That's why it takes forever for this model to learn. While for this one, it takes quite a few big steps, right? And, but then uh, it also starts overfitting faster. So maybe eventually this one will be better, but we'll just need to spend too much time computing this and seeing if it will be or not. This one seems to be in the sweet spot. It needs quite a few iterations, but then the performance is also better. Remember, we also evaluated the performance at uh, 0.05. So let's see how it looks like. This one is 0.5. So we see that it takes approximately two times more to converge. Okay, so here it's 60 and here it's uh, around 130 or maybe it's actually 70, something like this. So it takes two times more iterations to actually reach the peak. And this peak is even lower than this one. So even though it takes smaller steps, right, and it takes two times more iterations to learn, at the end, the result is still a bit worse than this one. Given that, I think this model uh, with uh, 0 0.1 seems like the best. So it doesn't need a lot of trees and it has the best performance. I think from that point of view, eta of 0 0.1 is the best parameter. And I usually first tune the eta parameter. I usually tune it in this order. First, I tune eta, then I tune the depth parameter, and then I tune the mean child weight parameter. So the max depth parameter is exactly the same as in random forest. And this uh, mean child weight is approximately the same as uh, mean samples leaf in random forest. So I usually train them in this order. First, I tune the eta parameter, then I tune the max depth parameter, then I tune mean child weight parameter, and then um, if I want, I tune other parameters. Okay, so we tuned the eta parameter. We decide to go with 0 0.1 as the best one. Let's copy it here, 0 0.1. What we want to do now is we want to change the max depth parameter. And what we'll do is we will reset the scores here. We'll keep only the new experiments. So now we will train this model with these parameters. This is the same as the previous best model that uh, we will use this as the baseline for comparing different uh, max depth values. Let's copy this part. So here, instead of eta, we'll use max depth. Let's save it. So we saved it as max depth of six. And let's try three, it's a relatively small model. Save it. Let's try four. And let's also try 10. And then we will see four, we will see 10, and this will give us some idea well, if we want to increase this or if we want to decrease it, where do we want to go from six? I think I accidentally delete the code for plotting. So let me type it again for max depth, data frame score, score. 
course items. Copy this one. And label will be max depth. I want to show the legend. Okay, this is the plot we have. We see that this 10 is worse, right? So it quickly gets higher score. It gets good score before others. So we see that if we look at iteration 10, then it's the best one among all four, but then the performance after iteration 10, it stagnates, it doesn't improve. While for others, they keep growing, keep growing, and then here they diverge. Let's remove this uh, 10 from uh, this plot. I'll do this by simply deleting this from the dictionary. So let me delete it. What I also want to do is I want to focus this area. So I want to zoom in a little bit. I want to limit the Y. And this is our AUC. So I want to limit the Y in this range. For that, I'll use PLT Y limit. So I want uh, the minimum one is 0 0.8 and then the max is 0 0.84. And so here it's easier to see what's going on. We see that the max depth of six, it's actually always worse than the others. And then it also goes down faster. This one is four, so it kind of stagnates also after 75 iterations, but this keeps growing or at least uh, up until here. So I think like it maybe goes like that after this, but after 175 iterations gets a pretty good score like 83.5%, something like this. Of course, it takes a lot more iterations for this to learn, but remember it, uh, the size of the tree is only three. It has only three levels, right? So these are simple trees like this. Here, the depth is only three. That's why it needs a lot more iterations compared to trees with six levels. This one is best around 50, 60 iterations, but this one needs a lot more trees to actually get to the decent performance because of the size. But yeah, we see that actually it's a lot better. So even though it learns slower, but eventually it learns it quite well. From that, what we conclude is that the max depth of three is uh, the best depth for this one. So we tuned this already, we tuned this one, and now we need to tune this mean child weight. Let me copy this thing here. So we decided that the best one is three, right? Let me copy this one here as well. So the next one we will tune is mean child weight. So let me put it here. And we will start with one as the baseline to so something we will compare other values against. So let's evaluate it. So one, and then we can also try, let's say 10. And I don't know, 30 perhaps. So this should give us some idea if we actually need to increase this value or not. And then let's look at the plots and see if we need to try other values. Place this one here. We probably don't need to limit it yet. Let's see what happens. Uh, we forgot to delete this uh, max depth. So let me just quickly do that. So what should have happened is I should have executed this before. So, but I don't want to rerun it. What I'll do is I'll simply remove the keys I don't want. So I'll remove this max depth three, four, and six. Six, okay. And let me plot it one more time. From what we see here, it doesn't seem to make much difference. So one is slightly better than the other. It's hard to see which one exactly. I think we need to enlarge it a little bit. So let's say from 82 to 85, yeah, 84. But yeah, so here it's not really worth experimenting with uh, this parameter because even though like if we zoom in really close, then we see that this one is always better than let's say this one, but it's a very tiny difference. So let's say we will go with this one simply because it's the default one. So it means that this is our final model. So let me let me train it. And also what we need to know is for how many iterations we want to train. I think 175 uh, seems like a good spot. So let's train our model for 175 iterations. 175. And the rest we don't change. Let's remove this one. 
like this one and train it. And this will be our final model, final EXGBoost model. Uh, to be honest, I don't uh, always do these plots. So what I usually do you know, when train models is I just look at this output, this uh, raw output, and sometimes I just have a pen and a paper with me and I write it down. Sometimes maybe I use Excel spreadsheet when uh, experimenting. So you can try and see what works best for you. I think this plotting works quite nice to get some initial intuition, but uh, then you can see if you really need to have these plots, if you need to capture the output, because it adds a bit of overhead. So you will see if you need this overhead or not, if it's worth it. Then uh, finally, I wanted to add that uh, these three parameters are important. So eta, max depth, and mean child weight. So they are important parameters, but there are other useful parameters, so especially subsample and call sample by tree. You can read more about these parameters in the official documentation, but I can quickly mention that subsample is first let's start with call, call sample by tree. So this is very similar to what we saw in random forest. In random forest every tree, every decision tree can get a subset of columns. Here this call sample by tree controls how many features each tree at, at each iteration uh, gets to see when training. You should experiment with that as well. So you can try values from, um, so the default one is uh, 1.0. So what I usually do is I try 0 0.6 and I try 0 0.3. And then this I see which one works best. And then uh, if I see if it's, let's say 0 0.6, then I try some values around that. And then slowly I see which one is uh, better. That some sample is similar to that, but instead of sampling, columns, sampling features, we're sampling rows. So let's say at each iteration, instead of getting all the training data, we get only, if we set it to 0 0.5, we get only 50% of the data and we randomly select this 50% of the data. So you can also experiment it, like set it to 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and then this will give you some idea what uh, kind of value makes sense for this uh, parameter or whether you should change it at all or not. Okay, and this concludes this lesson for parameter tuning. So what we did here is we experimented with eta, we experimented with max depth parameter, and we experimented with mean child weight parameter. This one actually should be one. And this is the order in which I change these parameters, in which I tune these parameters. So this works well for me, but it's not the only way of tuning parameters. You can perhaps tune them in other sequence, but I like um, this one. And uh, yeah, there's, it's not precise. Uh, there are many rules of thumbs. Uh, if you look it up on the internet, like if you search for tuning XG boost parameters, then you will find a lot of resources. It's probably the best one to check is Kaggle. On Kaggle, there are many tutorials on tuning XG boost parameters, and you will find many different uh, ways of approaching this. Okay. This is our final XGBoost model. And what we will do next in the next lesson is we will take a look at all these three models that we trained. So decision tree, random forest, and XGBoost. And we will select the best one. And then we will train the final model. So see you soon.